All right. So, because we're dealing with the asynchronicity approach in, uh, in Angular, you want to make sure you call at least that DOM function. So when you call the it test, there is a DOM thing. And then in here, you can call it after you subscribe. That way you can tell you that, that you're already done. Um, so it doesn't like loop over or give you some false negatives or false positives. So, of course, there are many other ways to go about it. Like you can use marbles, uh, you know, you don't need to subscribe. Maybe you can use fake async. So th there are tons of ways to deal with observables testing. Um, I just stick to the basic one because I want to keep it like focus on what's the purpose. So I told you this is about 10 users. I just checked it. It's actually 30. Um, so now I'm having a like passing task. And then I would say, oh, it's pretty good, everything is good. But it's actually a false positive. False positive is when it tells you you passed, but actually in reality you didn't do much. So um, how can we how can we check it? Well, first of all, what I would do, I would debug it. Remember, this is integration testing, so you actually let your tests be called. So in here, uh, we have this comma window. It's very useful in this scenario. Let me call it again. All right, it's running. Right now. Cool. Um, you can see it made a bunch of calls. And one of it, is, I expect, is the users. Here we go. There's a users thing. It returns everything, like my stuff. Everything is good. Until I actually look at this one, you see, I never call my part server. I actually call the real server. So what do I need to do? Well, that's the whole point of testing in isolation. You want to change this one into a part setup you have. And this has to match your comma conf as well as the part file here, the part web setup here. So let me do it, and then that should work. Um, let's have it a look. All right, this is because I logged the previous uh, thing. Um, here we go. I already called this server, and everything is good, and I got two tests passed. Voila. Now, you can see, yeah, but how do you know you didn't get the false positive? Uh, well, I can, I can pretty much do it. So what I can do is, I can, for example, modify that endpoint, and I say, I want to get the user, not the users. Let me call it. So now it doesn't match my interaction, because I clearly tell it it needs to call the users. And here we go, I get the error. Well, we are in integration testing, so a lot of times those tests will be a bit slower than the unit tests, and also, they're going to be maybe less verbose, but this is why I told you to always have a log file. And in the log file, um, it's because I made a tons of requests, you can see an error, matching interaction found, get user, interaction differs for the route. So it says like, hey, I don't know what's the user. Okay, here we go. We change it and that should work. Um, a lot of times, because this is super basic request, you just get on the path, but sometimes you would have like a payload. Um, the path log will show you what is the difference between the request made and the request expected. Um, maybe I can try to demonstrate it. Let's say I can say query A, B, C, and then in here I believe it's also query. Well, the object, okay, so this is like a parameter, I want to say param, and then the query represents those parameters, and then I, let's say I say params def, and if I make this request, you see, I, I'm, I'm failing, and it says that, um, oh, okay, this is also the fact that I'm running multiple times the same interaction and it needs to sync with the uh, provider impact. So let me run it one time in the beginning.
This is the part where I'm expecting it to fail because of the query parameters. Okay, yeah, it failed. When I opened the path lock, you can see. Uh, so it registered a request with params, params df. And then when you go down, it will say, hey, uh, you, I expected um, param abc, but I got params df. Something is wrong. And you see, this is super nice and clean way of like knowing what's, what's up. So this is just a demonstration. So I'm going to remove this one. Now you might be thinking, okay, what about this promise that um, we actually can keep our backenders in sync. Well, the whole like trick is that fact for every interaction between consumer and provider, of course, this is only one, you can have multiple, it will create a packed file. And this packed file is just a JSON file that represents an interaction between both of you. And now this, after a successful, uh, you know, CI pipeline, uh, it should upload this file on some storage, which I prefer to be a packed broker server. And then in the pipeline of your backend guys, you should fetch that one. And then there is a packed software that will use this in order to make the requests against the backend API. And then if the backend API introduces a breaking change, meaning the packed shooting that request will not get the response you expect and that will cause a failure in their pipeline. So then their pipeline will be stopped and they will not be able to go. And the message is go to your team, uh, mate or another team that is a consumer of your API and talk to them about changing the, the contract. That way you can prevent a disaster happening before hitting the production or any other environment. So, so I hope this is cool. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to answer.